Hi everyone and welcome to this demo about how to import bills and invoices data into QuickBooks. All right, so we'll begin today's demo with how to import invoices. And the way you start this off is you'll see from the home screen of QuickBooks, there is a little cog in the top right corner. You wanna click that and that will open up this window where in the tools column, you have the option to import data. So you wanna click that and then from there, uh, you should see this window with lots of white tiles. You wanna click the, the invoices tile, and then you'll be taken to the import invoices uh, wizard screen. So from this screen, uh, you will see the download an example link here. That will um, download a, an example CSV file to, to your computer, and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. I definitely recommend that you, you use that uh, it will just make the process of importing data into QuickBooks a lot easier um, and a lot less chances of any errors happening. You don't have to. Um, you can use your own file. It just means you will have to map the uh, the data yourself, um, and, and it, it can uh, be a little bit tricky if you've never done it before. So you might want to use the example the first time you do this. Uh, this is an example of what, of what the uh, the file looks like that you would download. And uh, there's a few pieces in this file that I, I want to take you through, albeit it's fairly straightforward. So some of these columns you'll see have an asterisk next to the, the column name. And those simply mean that, that that column is a mandatory field. Now, there are some exceptions to this. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is uh, where you can see uh, invoice number 1001. Uh, there are some uh, fields empty here where, under where it says customer. Now, the reason that's empty is because uh, if you have an invoice with several line items, in this case, this invoice has four line items, you do actually only need to put the, the, the fields such as customer name in once. Um, as long as they, the, it all links back to invoice 1001, then that, that, that is fine. It, it will make sure to import those, uh, those pieces into, into the invoice. Um, the, you, what you don't want to do, though, is you, don't, you definitely don't want to make sure that the, you, you do, let's just say, 1001 there, and then you, you restart that down here, because that will cause an error in the file. After that, uh, the thing to point out to you is these columns, so K, sorry, M and N, uh, these, these columns will only appear if you've set up uh, VAT in QuickBooks. So if you haven't done, uh, this example file, when you download it, will have columns M and N, uh, so the tax code and the tax amount absent. So when you, if you're going to import invoices and there is any VAT information on there that you want to be imported into QuickBooks, make sure you've got VAT set up in QuickBooks first. Um, last of all, you've got the currency column, which is shown in column O. Um, in this example, there are two different currencies uh, in this file. Um, you can import multi-currency invoices into QuickBooks using this method, but you just, again, you just want to make sure that multi-currency is set up in QuickBooks and the currency shown in the file are activated in QuickBooks. If they're not, then it's going to cause an error when you try to update it. So just make sure that those are activated before you, you go ahead and import. Um, one last thing is you've got this data in the bottom left corner. Now that is there just to help you out the first time you do this. Uh, you want to make sure that, that data is deleted before you go ahead and import the, the file. Otherwise, again, it will cause an error. So that's the uh, the import file example. And then we come back to the import uh, invoice wizard. So once you've got that uh, file ready, uh, you'll want to click on browse, go to your desktop, and then import uh, that file in. Um, you then have the option to have any contacts or products and services that are in your file. If they don't already exist in QuickBooks, then it, QuickBooks can import those in for you. You just need to make sure those boxes are ticked uh, as shown. Once you've done that, click next. Now, this is uh, where you would then map the uh, the columns within the CSV file to those that are in QuickBooks. Now, if you've used the example file uh, that I showed you earlier, that will happen automatically because you set that up so it just, it just does it um, straight away. If, however, you have decided to use your own CSV uh, file with, uh, with your own headers, you will have to manually make sure that those uh, the data in those columns aligns with what goes into QuickBooks. Um, if you're using column headers, which are fairly similar to what's already in QuickBooks, it will it will automatically match those up for you. Um, but just you just want to make sure uh, those are fully um, aligned before you go any further in this process. 
So once you've mapped all those out, you just want to click the next button down here. And then you then have to match the, the VAT codes. So the VAT codes shown here where I'm circling, uh, those are the VAT codes that are in your CSV file. Um, now you'll want to select from the drop down menu here to make sure the, the, the VAT code in your CSV file matches what is in QuickBooks as shown on the screen. Once you've done that, click next. And then before you go any further, QuickBooks is just going to highlight that importing any transactions uh, may affect previous VAT returns. As long as you're comfortable with that, click yes. And then it's going to summarize uh, what it's going to do uh, before you actually import it. So what this is telling me is before I click import, QuickBooks is going to create three new invoices. It's going to create two new customer records and it's going to create five new product and service items within uh, QuickBooks. Um, again, if I'm happy with that, I would click start import. It will then begin importing the data into QuickBooks and it will summarize what it's done once that's happened. So as you can see here, in this case, zero out of three invoices was successfully added. Now, that's fine because as it shows in the, the red box down below, uh, those were duplicates. So you can rest assured that if there if ever is a risk of you importing duplicate data into QuickBooks, QuickBooks will figure it out and it will not put it in, uh, just keep your data clean and it will tell you that it's, it hasn't put that in for a reason. Um, what it has done though is it's also said two customers were successfully added as were five items successfully added. So it's great that I can actually see some of what QuickBooks has actually done. We'll now go on to importing bills. So like you saw with the invoice uh, wizard, it's exactly the same for bills. Um, again, you'll want to download that example. It's a different example for bills as it is for invoices. So don't try to use the, you know, the invoice example um, with the bills because it'll, it'll just go all wrong. Um, so you want to download the example, which looks like this. And again, before you import this into QuickBooks, you're going to want to um, want to do do a few things. So again, I'll repeat myself here, but it's just to make sure this 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 does sink in. So this data here is for your guidance only. You want to make sure you delete that before you save the file and attempt to import the file. Otherwise, it will create an error. These column headers with the asterisks, they are mandatory and you want to make sure those columns have data in them. Um, like you saw on the invoicing screen, if you've got a bill with multiple line items, just repeat the bill number here and add in the, the information uh, for each of those line items on, on, the, on the respective row. Um, if you are VAT registered and you're wanting to record the VAT um, code and the VAT amount that's shown on, on, the, in, on the bill, sorry, uh, then you'll want to make sure VAT is set up in QuickBooks. Otherwise, you're not going to see columns K and L are shown on your screen appear. Um, it will be blank. So make sure you have that set up if you are VAT registered. And as with uh, invoices for currency, you can import bills with multiple currencies on. You just need to make sure that multi-currency is set up in QuickBooks and the currencies shown on screen are activated in QuickBooks. If they're not, it's going to cause an error. So that's uh, the bills template. Back to uh, the, the bills uh, wizard. Again, you just want to browse uh, once you've got your file ready. That will go to sample, bill, and import. Uh, and then you have the option to add any new suppliers that don't already exist in QuickBooks but are present in the CSV file. If that's the case, just make sure that box is ticked. Click Next. And then you're going to have to map the column headings. So again, if you've used the example uh, provided by QuickBooks, it will do that automatically. If not, you just want to make sure you map those manually as a um, based on the data that's uh, in your CSV file. Once you're done, you click Next. And then as before, you want to map your VAT codes. So the codes shown on your left are what's in your CSV file. The codes shown on your right is what's in QuickBooks. And you just want to make sure those match up nicely. Once you're done, click Next. And then it's going to alert you to the fact that any import transactions may affect previous VAT returns. If you're fine with that, click Next. And it's going to summarize now that it's ready to import the bills. And this is what's going to happen. So in this instance, two new bills will be imported into QuickBooks. If I'm fine with that, I click Start Import. It will begin importing the bills, and I'll get this nice little graphic saying it's all done. Two out of two bills were added, and that's it. That's how you import invoices and bills in the QuickBooks. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any other questions, I definitely suggest reaching out to your account manager or contact one of the team in sales or our technical support team. Thank you very much.